In the last video, titled The Backstory, you got a high-level view of what electronic documents and, more importantly, electronic forms are all about. You also learned that PDF and HTML are the most universally accepted document formats for creating electronic forms. In this video, we'll take a closer look at these formats to understand better how they can be used in a data workflow process. Let's do a short review. A form is a special kind of document for collecting data from a user. But in order for a form to be useful, it needs to be part of a data workflow process for actually collecting that data. We can create forms using different form technologies, and we can implement the details of a workflow process differently. But all data workflows have these same components in one form or another. Someone creates the form. That form is then distributed by a process initiator to a group of users called responders. The responders then fill out the form and return the data to the initiator. Data from the responders is then compiled into a data set that is then put to some other purpose. Both PDF and HTML provide excellent options for these features. In fact, PDF and HTML form features are amazingly similar, but the technologies provide for very different options when it comes to workflow features. The biggest difference is that HTML is specifically designed to be used online. It is, of course, the format used to build web pages. PDF, on the other hand, is designed to be used offline. You don't need an internet connection to use a PDF. To be able to work offline, a PDF is completely self-contained. Everything needed to display that PDF is inside one single file. To transfer the PDF to another person, you send them the whole file. The HTML usage model is very different. The resources needed to display the HTML document are scattered around the Internet. An HTML document, or web page, is not one file. It is a collection of files that are in different locations. So you don't send someone an HTML document directly. You send them a URL, which is a reference to the actual HTML file. Because internet connections can be slow and unreliable, HTML is designed to be a light and fast format. It's meant to be able to load something useful quickly so the user has something to look at right away. But HTML does not reproduce well. Web pages look different on different systems. They also don't print well because they are designed to look well on a screen, not on a piece of paper. PDF, on the other hand, has very high quality and exacting graphic reproduction capabilities. To a large extent, a PDF looks and acts much like a paper document. This is the reason that PDF first became popular in the print industry. But more importantly for us, it means that PDF has a familiar look and feel and works well in a mixed paper and electronic workflow. And finally, an HTML page requires server support. HTML forms are by definition a server-based process because they operate over the internet. A PDF does not require a server. You can create PDFs on your desktop and distribute them and use them without any kind of back-end server process because PDFs are completely self-contained in a single file. Let's take a look at how some of the different workflow components are implemented using the different technologies. An HTML form is served up to a web browser on the user's system. It is, in fact, an ordinary web page, so that the user accesses and interacts with it just like they would any other web page. When the form is completed, the user submits it back to a server script that then processes the data, possibly compiling the data into a database. Barring glitches in the connection, HTML forms provide a great user experience. There are, however, a number of problems for the creator or initiator of that form's process. The biggest one is the server-side scripting. This is a required part of an HTML forms process. And unfortunately, writing server scripts is not an option for most novice users. But to be fair, there are services that you can purchase that handle the back-end process. You either have to do it yourself or it has to be purchased. On the other side, PDF forms offer a much wider variety of process options in HTML. The form itself is created on the desktop as a single file. This means that the form can be delivered to the responders in any number of ways. On the primitive end, the form could simply be printed and transferred manually. Or it could be emailed, it could be uploaded to a website, transferred to a file sharing application, or even burned onto a CD. When the user fills out the form, they can take their time because they are not dependent on an internet connection or a remote database. Everything is right there on their own system. If necessary, they could save and reopen the PDF several times before sending it back. 
and they can send it back to the initiator in a variety of ways as well, from printing it to emailing it to submitting it to the same kind of server processes that are used with HTML forms. All of the characteristics I just mentioned make PDF forms more accessible and usable to non-experts than HTML forms. PDF forms are easy to create. Acrobat is the only tool that's necessary. They're also more independent and don't tie you to a service that you have to pay for or support online. And they can be distributed in many different ways. It can also be used in complex data-driven workflows. Data collection can be simple or it can be complex, whatever your needs or capabilities provide for. You might think I've been a bit down on HTML forms. But of course, PDF and HTML are both important and necessary parts of the electronic document ecosystem. We need both of them. To illustrate this idea, here's a complex workflow that uses both HTML and PDF forms. This diagram shows the sign-up process for a sporting event, such as a 10K run. The event participants fill out the entry form online and then submit this data to the organizer's database. This part of the process is handled by a back-end server script. On the day of the event, the organizer merges the data into a nice-looking print-worthy PDF version of the sign-up form and then prints out copies for each participant, very much like a mail merge process. The reason for doing this is that the entry form contains a liability waiver that has to be signed by hand. The printed PDF has the added advantage of providing a hard copy record and giving the participant the opportunity to fill in data that was missed or unavailable previously. So here we have an example where both HTML and PDF are used together seamlessly. As we've seen, one of the biggest advantages of PDF forms is that they provide an easy way for the novice user to start using electronic forms. But they can also be used in complex mixed workflows that involve both HTML forms and paper. PDF forms are truly a very powerful and accessible tool. But I haven't quite been honest in my presentation. All along I've been talking about a specific type of PDF forms technology called the Acroform, which is the original PDF forms technology. The fact is though that there are really two PDF forms technologies. The other one is XFA forms, or as it is commonly called, Lifecycle forms. In this video series, I will only be covering Acroforms because this is the technology that's most available in Acrobat 11. However, it's good to know a little bit about Lifecycle forms because you will see them referenced here and there, and it can be confusing. So, in the next video, titled Acroforms versus Lifecycle forms, I'll briefly cover the differences between these two technologies and explain why it's probably not a good idea to use Lifecycle forms going forward into the future.